Hi, welcome back. This is lesson four in our database series. Uh, a very quick recap. We've created a database. We're using phpMyAdmin to edit that database. And at this point, what we've done is we've created a table in the database called contacts. Uh, we've created uh, two records in the database. And we've also performed a search to show a simple search query on how to retrieve certain data. Now, when we searched, um, what what is important to note here is you might be thinking, I'm not going to use this PHP my admin to store all my contacts. And, and no, that's correct. You're probably not. This is a pretty uh, useful but hideous uh, interface and not very appealing to the eye. What's important to know is if we run that uh, same search we did at the end of the last lesson, say go, this uh, code here, this uh, SQL code here, is something that we can import into or use in uh, a language like PHP to pull data from this database and spit it out on the page. And then thus we can manipulate that data with HTML and CSS to make it more visually stimulating. Um, and that is where the benefit is. And that is where these search um, queries are important. And these, this uh, search tab will help you um, if you're not familiar with the syntax of, of SQL uh, at the point. At this point, uh, it'll help you, you know, build these queries and kind of get familiar with it. So moving on, let's go ahead and look at the export tab. And what this is going to allow us to do is export um, all or parts of the. Um, database or uh, table that is this first uh, area here will ask us what type of um, file or format are we going to export this for uh, in and if you were going to take this data and import it into another MySQL database I would recommend using the S SQL uh, format it's probably the most uh, reliable and you shouldn't have any issues uh, but however you can also take this data and you could export it for Microsoft Excel and plop it into a spreadsheet um, if you use a CSV which is a which is a, uh, a, a text document that uh, has the uh, fields and columns separated by these uh, delimiters here uh, it's a pretty nasty messy looking file but it works you can import this into things like uh, Excel or even access um, with a little bit of tweaking and take your, your uh, MySQL database and convert it into another database. And there's other options here, but uh, mo more than likely you're going to be using this SQL or CSV and maybe even PHP array if you're doing things in PHP. Um, the first one we're going to look at is the CSV file. And we're going to go ahead and keep all these options uh, default. Uh, this is a pretty standard way to export, so no reason to change it. And we have the option of saving the file or not. And if we save the file, it's going to allow us to save a file to our computer, um, which we can access later. Um, we can also apply compression to it, which in this case is not really needed. We have uh, a very simple database, so there's no reason to compress it. Um, the other option is to uncheck this and what it will do instead is output what would be in the file into a text box here and let's go ahead and run that so we'll say go and here you have it it's going to give us what would have been in the text document the CSV file so had you saved this we could have opened it up in notepad and you would have seen the, the same thing and uh, thus you can go into something like Microsoft Access or Microsoft Excel and import this file with a little bit of tweaking of options and such. Um, let's go ahead and go back and we'll click on our table again here and let's check the export tab again and this time we're going to do SQL.
and the SQL has um, a ton more options to it, um, whereas the CSV is really perfect for uh, making a spreadsheet out of the data. SQL is going to allow you to not only take the data, but the actual structure of the table if you want. Um, so with our options, we can choose what comes with it. If we made any comments, we can insert the comments with it. Um, another important checkbox here is the structure. If we want to export the structure of the database, which would be the columns um, and the table name itself, we would do that here. And here are some options associated with that. The other option is the data. Um, so what we actually could do is we could export the structure of the database, but uncheck the data. And all it's going to do is say we have our new database. We could import this and it's going to create the structure of our table, leaving the data out. So in my example of um, exporting earlier, I used a client example where you may have a client's website um, that works really nice and, and a new client says, hey, I want it to be just like this guy's the website. Um, you could come in here and export the structure of the database uh, or the tables and leave the data out so you don't have to go through and strip out uh, the previous client's information. You can go ahead and put in the new data for the new client. And that's just an example. However, if you did want to keep the data, you can go ahead and check this box. So we're going to go ahead and run this, and we're going to uncheck Save as File. You don't need to, but uh, in this example, we don't need to save it. So I just want you to see it. So we'll say Go, and you're going to see a substantially larger amount of information here than in the CSV file. And that's because this is storing the information for the table itself, not just the values. Um, all these up here, these are comments. Anything with the uh, double dash here. And really just to help, um, help you navigate the document. Um, what this is doing here is this is the SQL code for creating the table itself and all of the fields or columns inside of the table and its properties. And then down here is the um, SQL query that's going to insert the data we already have into that new table. In a later lesson, we'll get really deep into what all this means. But uh, all you would need to do is simply copy this and then paste it into an SQL window in your other database. It'll run it and should work as long as you haven't changed anything. So let's go back to our contacts table. And um, the next thing we're going to look at is the operations tab. And similar to the operations tab on the in the database view, um, we just have some maintenance options here, some just general settings for the database. We can change the name of the database, or the table. Um, we can add table comments, um, change some properties of it, uh, change where the auto increment value is at right now. Right now it's, this three is representing that the next value um, when, when we insert a new record is going to be three. Over here, we could copy this table. And if we did that, we can choose, similar to the export, we can choose that we just want the structure, or we just want the data and structure, or we just want the data, and some other options here. Um, we could also move the database table to another database, and if we had more databases in this uh, on my server, we could, we could copy this and move it, or sorry, move it. Um, let's go ahead and copy this table, just to give you an example. So we're going to say structure only, and we'll call this uh, contacts structure underscore structure, and just the structure. So we'll say go. It's going to run the SQL that's involved in it, and everything went well. So we can click on contact structure, and here's a copy of our table. But if we go to browse, there is no data. And that's because we chose structure only. Now let's go back to our contacts table. And we're going to go to export. 
and we're going to use SQL. We're not going to export the structure, but we are going to export the data. And we're not going to save it as a file. We're just going to have it come up on the screen. So we're going to say go. Here is the SQL it exported. And let's copy this. And let's come over to our contacts underscore structure table, which again has no data in it. Let's say SQL. And here we can paste the uh, SQL that we just exported. These are just comments, so we don't need to change anything here necessarily. However, what we do need to do before we run this is where it says insert into contacts. We don't want to insert into contacts. We want to insert into contacts underscore structure. So within these uh, quotes here, we'll insert uh, the underscore structure. And now we can go ahead and run this. And it was a success. We can come over to our structure or to our contact structure and browse and we now have records. Now let's go ahead and go back to our database view. So we'll click on the database name over here on the left and under the structure view we can see both of our tables and now we have some options for those tables. Two very important ones here are empty and drop. There's a big difference between the two. Um, if we drop the table it will delete the table and its data completely and uh, if that's not what you're going for that could be a problem. Um, so the other option is empty, which will keep the structure of the table intact. All the fields um, or column names, uh, but will dump all the records involved in it. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and actually drop the contact structure because it was really just an example. So we'll drop and it's going to ask you if you really want to and we'll say okay and here shows us the SQL involved in dropping a table as well down here and we have just our contacts now um, in the next lesson we're going to um, talk about relational databases and uh, some of the concepts behind that